Hello everyone, welcome back to No Plan. Today we have a very special episode and that is a review of the System76 Pangolin. So this laptop was sent to us by System76, but this is not sponsored. We do have to send it back and we are receiving no financial compensation. So our review is going to be unbiased. Now, bias is out of the way. This laptop, we got some cool things to talk about. Starting off with the unboxing experience. If my Thelio Miro showed me anything about System76, it's that they love to have fun with the unboxing experience. And the Pangolin is a little bit more muted, that's for sure. It is a basic white box. You open it up and you're immediately presented with a envelope filled with some goodies to include some stickers, very nice. And then you get immediately to the charging brick and the laptop itself. The build quality of this is really, really good. It's all aluminum, the lid is aluminum, the base is aluminum, and you can hold it by one hand and it feels solid, and it just feels very premium. And that doesn't stop at just the aluminum body. That also goes to things like the keyboard. The keyboard, oh my gosh, this keyboard feels fantastic. I mean, as far as laptop keyboards go, this is probably, I dare say it's the, best I've ever used? It's hard to say. I have a Lenovo ThinkPad uh, T15G Gen 1, and that one also has a really good keyboard, but I think I would put this one above it. The keys are plastic, but they somehow fit that feel of this really good quality aluminum chassis. Um, but the next thing, of course, is the trackpad. And as far as trackpads go, again, really, really good. I mean, comparing again to my ThinkPad, just because that's probably one of my favorite laptops I've just used in general, I would even put it above the ThinkPad's trackpad. The power button, they, they had some fun with this. The power button is a nice glowing blue. It just feels really, really good. Moving on to the rest of the body, we do have uh, cooling vents here on the back. They are nice and big. It does have a terabyte of SSD storage inside, and it is very fast from our testing. And you can also fit two more M.2 SSDs in here, and, and they advertise you can do up to 16 terabytes. 16 terabytes in a laptop, especially this size, that's pretty nuts. Also in the back, of course, you have more cooling vents right here. It just really is a lot of the base is taken up with cooling vents, and I really like that. This thing has not had a problem with overheating or anything like that, which is good because it does have a pretty powerful CPU, which we will get to in a little bit. Also, the rubber feet on the bottom, really, really good. They're nice and sticky. If we stick it on this surface, it's it's taking a good bit of effort to move this thing around, um, which if you use laptops constantly like I do, I mean, that is really nice to see because one thing I can't stand is sticking my laptop on a table and it's just like all over the place. This thing stays planted when you put it on, on a hard surface. And then kind of rounding off everything before we get to the IO is the webcam. And the webcam is, well, pretty good. This is a test of the Pangolin's uh, webcam, and the audio is surprisingly decent. The video is very contrasty I, uh, and well-saturated, so I would call it a satisfactory webcam, but that is the way of webcams these days. And now let's go ahead and get to the I.O. on this thing. The I.O. also very impressive. We have two USB 3.0 Type-A slots on this side, as well as a USB-C port a combo headphone microphone jack, a full-size HDMI, very nice to see full-size HDMI on here, as well as its barrel connector for the charging brick. We'll get to the charging brick in a second though. And you have a hardware disablement for the webcam and the microphone. And that is a very cool function to see. Like on my Lenovo T15G, you have a little switch that can go over the webcam I don't believe, though, that that does anything to the hardware. It just covers it up. But this is an actual hardware switch that ensures that you are not connected on the hardware level to your webcam and microphones. Very cool to see. Coming over to the other side of the laptop, you have a full-size SD card slot. Also, I would say pretty rare to see these days. I love the fact that they included a full-size SD card slot because if you're in any kind of a creative industry or anything, photography, videography, whatever, you're gonna be using SD cards and you don't have to pull out a dongle just to use that thing. And then you also have another USB 3.0 type A port and full-size Ethernet port. Very nice to see, up to gigabit. And a Kensington lock. 
So before we move on to specs and software, let's talk about their charging brick. The charging brick is, you know, fine. It does the job, but if I'm gonna be picky about it, I mean, this is a very nice laptop, very premium product, and this just feels like something very generic that would have come with any like off-brand laptop or something like that. But it, I mean, it gets the job done. System76 is known for their configurability. A lot of their devices on their website, you can go through and choose all sorts of options. Even on laptops, you can choose a different display that you might want. This comes with an AMD Ryzen 7 7840U, which is an eight core 16 thread CPU, which is rated at 5.1 gigahertz. It also comes with 32 gigs of RAM, which is good. And that is also a good thing that they got with such a high number because it's soldered onto the motherboard. You're not gonna be able to change, update, or swap RAM or anything on this thing. What you got is what you got, which is fine. But for me, I would rather have the upgradability path of, you know, sodium slots, but at least it's a good amount. It also can come standard with 500 gigabytes. This one is a one terabyte model. And it's only 55 bucks to go up to one terabyte probably not a bad call. Now, the graphics card on this machine is kind of a claim to fame for the device, but for me, it's actually a little bit of a caveat. It is the AMD Radeon 780M. What really is interesting about this is this GPU does not have any of its own VRAM. It is integrated with the system's RAM, and it's caused a few of its own issues within Pop! OS in regards to Blender and DaVinci Resolve. We'll talk about it more in a second, but that is definitely one of the bigger downsides about this laptop. System76 also claims that this thing can get 10 hours of battery life. I will say this, I don't necessarily doubt that claim. We have not been able to do a full battery life test because again, it is quite long. Now, of course, under more heavy load, you're gonna get less, obviously, but I do believe the claim that if we're doing, just doing general web browsing and some, uh, you know, library office work or something like that, it's probably gonna be around the 10 hour battery life mark. Now, in regards to the onboard speakers, I was pleasantly surprised. These actually sound really, really good. Let's give it a listen. Very well done on the laptop speakers. One of the things that is the claim to fame of this new Pangolin is that display. And I will say this, it's a very pretty display. It has got very vibrant colors. It's 1080p, 16 inches, and it just is a very good looking machine. It covers a lot of the R Adobe RGB spectrum as they have just recently advertised. And I will say this, when it comes to doing like graphic design and video editing, things like that, this is a beautiful looking display to be doing that on the go. It even was very visible outside during broad daylight. So we were very glad to see that. And this display definitely lives up to the hype. Another very important test, of course, is boot time. And this is another place where the Pangolin really shined. We did a test without the drive being encrypted underneath Pop! OS, of course, so that we could go directly from hitting the button to the login screen. And we got a very respectable 15.01 seconds. So now let's get into software. And that is one of the strong points about this laptop because it is built from the ground up to run Linux and specifically their own flavor, Pop! OS. But you can get it configured still with standard Ubuntu. Here's the thing about it. Pop! OS, we've already done a, a look back in our Thelio Mira review, so go check that out. Pop! OS on here definitely shines. It is a great operating system. However, it does have a few caveats in the sense that that 780M doesn't feel like it's being used to its full potential. Inside of Blender, we can't use any sort of GPU acceleration. I also installed DaVinci Resolve and could not even get it to launch. I even lost a code trying to get it to do so. So in regards to anything you're about to see as far as benchmarking and stuff goes, we pretty much had to stick with the CPU, which pretty much is the moral of the story on a lot of the performance of this laptop. It feels like you're gonna to need to use it as a CPU focused machine, definitely not something that's GPU intensive. Now in System76's defense, it's not on their ultra powerful page or whatever they call it, where they've got all of their really high-end laptops for like graphics processing and stuff like that. They've got it on their ultra portable page, which I do feel like fits this, however, when it's on the Ultra Portable page, it is a great mixture between lightweight, good battery life, but it does have a ton of CPU power. But if you're expecting anything out of the GPU, you may have to start looking elsewhere. So with not being able to install DaVinci Resolve, which is my single most important program as a video professional, I wanted to see if there was any other good options for video editing on this machine in particular. And so of course I turned it to Kaden Live. Kaden Live actually did better than I think it ever has on any machine I've ever tried it on. 
that eight core CPU at 5.1 gigahertz, I mean, it just flew. We did a 4K timeline at 24 FPS. We got real time playback. It seemed very responsive. We stacked the timeline up three high and it just kept playing. I mean, it was really, really solid. This might be a good answer for you if you are in a Caden Live type workflow, but otherwise you're gonna have to look elsewhere because of that 780M. System76 also advertises this as a light gaming machine. So we gave that a bit of a test and light gaming is a good answer for that. You're not gonna be playing AAA titles at max settings at 1080p. We even tried Need for Speed Heat and we had to take it down to 720p in low settings and it felt very smooth after that, but that is a little bit more of an intensive game. And then we switched over to Lethal Company, which ran perfectly fine. So if you wanted to do some old school emulation or games that aren't necessarily the most intensive thing, this is also gonna be a great option for you. Now with those cons out of the way, let's get into benchmarking. We did something here as well, mainly because of that GPU issue, which I had a very strong opinion to not do, but Jack was insistent we do it. We installed it. Uh, Jack installed Windows 10 and he installed the official AMD drivers and he gave, say, gave some things to test and so now we were able to run some benchmarks on the Pangolin with Windows and Linux. So first up between the two is the classic benchmarking tool Geekbench. Geekbench 6 to be precise. And what was really interesting was Linux was actually a little bit lower. We're talking about 200 points lower on single and multi-core. I was actually pretty shocked to see this because Linux is generally a lower overhead than Windows is. But what got really interesting is when we got started doing real life benchmarking and the story changed quite a bit. So let's look at Blender. Inside of Blender, we saw quite a bit of difference between Windows and Linux and Linux was faster. Now keep in mind, all of this is CPU, none of this is GPU. As you can see in pretty much all of these tests, they are relatively closely, but if you actually zoom in, there is a definite 20% or so improvement on Linux over Windows, except for when you get to Lone Monk. And that one was just straight up, I did not finish for Pop! OS, which was really interesting. I don't know why, but it did finish on Windows and it was a, a pretty good long render. Like we said, those were just CPU tests because we weren't able to get the GPU working inside of Linux. On Windows, however, it's a slightly different story. We were able to get HIP to work inside of Blender, but it was actually a little bit slower to use the GPU, which was really interesting to see. Again, it's a great CPU inside of this thing, but the fact that the GPU was even slower was actually a bit of a surprise because it was supposed to be using both. Another great real life scenario is handbrake transcoding. We threw it a H.264 MOV 4K file and we had a transcode in Linux as well as Windows and it was definitely a bit faster inside of Linux. Now a benchmarking tool that we ran inside of Linux but not Windows was the Pharonix test suite and what we re returned was in the x264 4k test was 28.11 fps and this is again using the CPU. In 1080p of the same test we turned 119.05 fps again using the CPU. Then we tried Tomb Raider and it was, did not finish because it was using the GPU, as well as the Project Phys X OpenCL benchmark that also did not finish what was, which was using the GPU. So I figured the GPU was completely ruled out by this point, but it wasn't. The VK Peak test actually did finish and it returned these results and I was actually surprised to see that. So there's definitely GPU rendering and everything that is happening on this machine, but it's probably limited to things like Vulkan and OpenCL and not really utilizing things that are required by the AMD drivers. Theory. So if you're looking at getting one of these laptops, you're probably not thinking about putting Windows on it. Although some of you probably are because I saw some tests on Geekbench on the Pangolin running Windows. So let's go ahead and send it over to Jack and kind of get what his thoughts were on using the device with Windows on it. Let me know. So obviously this laptop was not designed to run Windows on it. And the one issue I had is that it would not pull in Wi-Fi drivers. I had to find it off a GitHub page. Ethernet worked perfectly fine. The second thing was I had to download the AMD drivers directly because I wanted to output to a secondary monitor and it didn't work at first until I got the drivers and after that it was fine. Now for gaming, I tried Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 which actually ran very well. I mean it was getting about 90 frames a second. Unfortunately uh, it happened the OBS footage was corrupted, uh, we'll say that about it. So we don't have any benchmarks showing you what it looks like but it ran surprisingly well as did the finals which those are pretty intensive games. 
Now, I did try to run Sea of Thieves on this laptop, and actually it didn't run, it kept on crashing. So, the gaming experience, it's definitely mixed. It's, it's possible, but I can't promise which titles will work and which ones won't. So the Windows experience, it's not really any better at all. I mean, I'm not gonna say it like I had a terrible time, but honestly, I would just stick with Pop! OS if you're using this. Windows out of the way, you're probably gonna be keeping Pop! OS on this thing. Let's go over some closing thoughts. First off, we do wanna say thank you to System76 for sending us this, this, devi this device to take a look at, and it really has been an amazing device. But we've gotta be critical here. We gotta look at price, we've gotta look at the overall performance, and who it may be for. Now, to be fair to System76, they do not call this one of their performance-centered laptops. However, it's got a really beefy CPU. But, that GPU is a big butt for me. Because with the inability to even launch DaVinci Resolve and properly use it, I did reach out to System76 for a proper answer on how to get DaVinci Resolve running, and they tried it on their end, and their best answer was basically to like virtualize DaVinci Resolve and everything like that. Look, I'm a, I'm a creative. I'm not a command line junkie. I try to do everything by the GUI. I'm probably one of the more standard users you're going to find. And doing all that fancy stuff with DaVinci Resolve is not really an answer. But Caden Live ran great. All these different benchmarks ran great underneath CPU. So if you're looking for a CPU centric machine, I would say the Pangolin is a great option for you. It has an amazing display. The build quality is fantastic, amazing IO. So if you're doing anything that doesn't require a dedicated GPU like me, this is a fantastic machine. I would love to take a look at another System76 laptop with a dedicated NVIDIA GPU. So maybe one day down the line, we'll be able to do that. Now, this laptop's cost is $1,300 with the base configuration and with a 500 gig SSD. Is it worth the $1,300 price tag? I would say for sure. I would honestly put this build quality pretty close to an Apple MacBook. You do get a premium product and it's definitely worth that money for sure, especially if you're a professional looking for a laptop to really get some work done on. This is a very well built machine and I would honestly have it if it had a dedicated GPU. So that concludes our review of the System76 Pangolin laptop. And again, we would like to say thank you for watching and thank you to System76 for sending it to us. We cannot wait to see you in our next video here on No Plan. So make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.